So let's take a look at Hello Point 1. This is one of the first examples in the book. Uh, it's in chapter two, um, but it's the first example which has enough bulk to it that we can start to look at what is our code going to look like in this class. So uh, as we saw before, we can get into the um, developer tools, right? So we've clicked into this from the, from the WebGL programming guides, right? So here's our book. We go to chapter two, click on hello point one. Now we're into our code here. So let's first look first in the HTML file. In the HTML file, all we're doing uh, is we're creating a canvas. And this canvas has, an, has a name, WebGL. And we're going to load some script files. And some of these script files are going to be local. This is hello.1.js. That's for this assignment. And then we have some lib files. In case you uh, haven't used Unix systems before or haven't done a lot of command line work, this dot dot means to go up one directory. So what this means is one directory up in our source tree, we can find a lib directory, which has some JavaScript in it. And so indeed, on this WebGL, it's the WebGL, this is in chapter two, if we go up one directory to WebGL, and then down to lib, and then down into the file, we'll find this. Now, why is this relevant? Because you're probably going to do development on your local machine. And on your local machine, it will be tempting to put absolute paths here. But when you upload it to run on a web page, you're going to need to use these relative paths from where your HTML and JavaScript live. So let's take a look in the JavaScript file. So in the JavaScript file, we have a vertex shader, we have a fragment shader, uh, and we have a JavaScript function. So let's take a look in this function. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get the canvas. Now this is the same canvas right here. This is the same canvas that we defined on the other side. So we can see that, and we're going to get it by the name. So this is the name that we put over here in HTML. So if we just change this name right here, let me just put a couple of X's here. So I'll put 160 so you can know that it's happening for this class. If we save this file and we reload this page. We got nothing, nothing happened here. Why is there nothing here? Because we've named this thing now WebGL 160. And on this side, we would have to get the element out of our web page is named WebGL 160. So if I save this and now save this and we reload, now I've got my, my element back. So there's nothing magic about the naming that, that's, go, that's going on in here, right? So whatever name I put here, I need to get it onto my other side. Now, most people will just start with starter code that the book's provided, so you can just use whatever's there. I, I want to make the point that there's nothing magic about that name. Similarly, there's nothing magic about this name canvas, which represents this square portion here. So the book uses the name canvas, so we're going to continue to use it. The next thing that happens is we're going to get the WebGL context. Now, everything we do in WebGL is going to be referenced through this GL variable. This is a class variable that has all kinds of things stored in it to make GL work. I recommend that you use the name GL because the book does, and it will make your function calls look like other GL function calls. Uh, if you weren't in WebGL or if you were C or in something else, your code will look more similar. So I recommend the name GL for this. This, uh, although it isn't done here, this is a local variable in JavaScript because we're in main. We will later see that we can move this up um, to be global, and I'm going to recommend we do that. We'll talk about that later. We init the shaders. This is a function which is defined by the book. Um, this function basically compiles and loads the, these two shaders into your GPU. Uh, and then we just have a little error checking around it. Here we call GL clear color. If I was in C++, this would just be GL clear color. Here we have the class GL dot the function call clear color. And this is the red, green, blue. Uh, and this is alpha. Don't worry about it. For now, it's just one. And then when we call clear, we're going to clear the color. Since we set it to 0, 0, 0, that's black. We clear to black. And then we're going to draw arrays with just one point, which is going to call our vertex shader and in turn our fragment shader. 